Geek Radio Daily for halfway day. And today, I understand where it's it's cold outside. But then again, I'm told it's cold out there every day. And if you put that together and get it right, I'll go bing, you got it. Hi, everyone. We're the fine folks from GeekRadioDaily.com, welcoming you to the 2nd of February. Look at your calendar. The folks that are bringing it to you today, the man that sees things quite simply and will explain them to you the best way he knows how, that there's podcast Adrian secret. We shouldn't tolerate evil just because it's convenient. I mean... That's how microwaves got so damn popular. And look what they do to food. Ew. Cold in the middle. That's not right. That's not right at all. Hi, everybody. I'm the guy that likes to do the thing that he does with the hoo-ha and the whiz and the wah. I'm the wonderful Billy Flynn. Yes. One imagines some of those words were attached to actual meanings of some sort. Uh, I understood it. What happened this day, yo? In 1709, Alexander Selkirk is rescued after being shipwrecked on a desert island, inspiring the book Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. 1848, the first shipload of Chinese immigrants arrives in San Francisco, California. 1863, Samuel Langhorn Clemens used a pseudonym for the first time. He is better remembered as Mark Twain. Oh. 1870, the Cardiff Giant was revealed to be nothing more than carved gypsum. The discovering Cardiff, New York, was alleged to be the petrified remains of a human. 1880, the SS Strathleven arrived in London after the first successful shipment of frozen mutton from Australia. Mm. 1887, the first Groundhog Day is celebrated in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, and will be again tomorrow and the day after. 1892, William Painter patented the bottle cap. What did they use before that? 1893, the Edison Studio in West Orange, New Jersey, made history when they filmed the first motion picture close-up. Of course, it was owned by Thomas Edison, in case you missed the Edison Studio name. 1913, Grand Central Terminal officially opened at 12.01 a.m., even though construction was not entirely complete, more than 150,000 people visited the new terminal on its opening day. 1914, Charlie Chaplin's first film appearance, Making a Living, premieres. 1935, Leonard Keeler conducted the first test of the polygraph machine in Portage, Wisconsin, or so he claims. 1943, during World War D, the remainder of Nazi forces from the Battle of Stalingrad surrendered to the Soviets. Stalingrad has since been renamed Volgograd, which I didn't say right. 1946, the first Buck Rogers automatic pistol was made. 1962, the eighth and ninth planets aligned for the first time in 400 years and never again, because there's only eight planets. Dare you. 1964, Hasbro launches the newest toy for boys, G.I. Joe, a real American hero. Girls can play. They've got, like, you know, Scarlet and Baroness. 1980, the situation known as Abscam began when reports surfaced that the FBI had conducted a sting operation that targeted members of the U.S. Congress. A phony air businessman was used in the operation, as brilliantly portrayed in Bloom County. 1989, the final Russian armored column left Kabul, Afghanistan after nine years of military occupation. <laughs> nine years? It would stay that long. It's crazy. 1992, weatherman Phil Connors kills himself, rescues strangers, steals the groundhog, and eventually seduces his producer boss. It was a hell of a groundhog day. Bing! Also, the murder trial begins for Robert Gambini and Stan Rothenstein, a.k.a. just a couple of utes. 1998, U.S. President Clinton introduced the first balanced budget in 30 years. Which, of course, led to a surplus. Huh. 2000 first digital cinema projection in Europe, specifically Paris, realized by Felipe Binant with the DLP cinema technology developed by Texas Instruments. 2004 is reported that a white powder had been found in an office of Senate Majority Leader Bill Frist at the CDC. Later confirmed the powder was the poison ricin. 2010, The Lancet retracted Andrew Wakefield's fraudulent paper linking the MMR vaccine to autism, meaning <laughs> it doesn't. Take that, Jenny McCarthy. 2016, using a precursor to the atmospheric processor of his own invention, Peter Whelan is able to generate a localized synthetic atmosphere above the polar ice cap, effectively ending global warming, <laughs> which made him a real modern Prometheus. Birthdays? The very lovely and talented Gemma Arterton is 36, from Quantum of Solace, Prince of Persia, Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters, and The Voices. Rich Somers, 44, Harry, from Mad Men. He tried to steal our Pammy on The Office. Uh, Lori Beth Denberg is 46, from The Steve Harvey Show. Michael Weiss is 60, The Pretender. Lauren Lane is 63, she was Cece on The Nanny. Kim Zimmer is 67, Reva, from Guiding Light. Brent Spiner is 73. From the next generation, Dude Wears My Car. He has a fantastic 
a web series for a little while. And of course, we all were first introduced to him via his fantastic character on Night Court. Blake Clark is 76, a stand-up genius, Grace Under Fire, The Water Boy, although that part was a little bit disturbing. <laughs> I don't know when you're not going. And also Shakes the Clown. That's true. Bo Hopkins is 80 from White Lightning, Wild Bunch, and Midnight Express. Tom Smothers is 85. Of course, the Smothers Brothers and, you know, the preeminent yo-yo champion. And I believe he was also actually canceled. By a member of the government, uh, yes. a.k.a. Nixon. Yeah, he certainly was. Born to stay no longer with us in 1786, Jacques-Philippe Marie Binet, French mathematician, physicist, and astronomer. 1861, Solomon A. Guggenheim, American businessman, philanthropist, founded the Solomon Museum with the Guggenheims. 1890, Charles Carell, American actor and screenwriter, was Andy on Amos and Andy Radio. Yeah, he was the white guy playing Andy. 1909, Frank Albertson, American actor and singer. His money was stolen in Psycho. 1944, Jeffrey Hughes, English actor, Onslow, keeping up appearances. He was the voice of Paul in Yellow Submarine. 1947, Farrah Fawcett, American actress, producer. We all had that poster. 1952, Carol Ann Susie, an American actress, voice actress, and of course played Mrs. Wallowitz. 1963, Robert Mandan, Chester on Soap, and of course, James on Three's a Crowd, the spinoff no one asked for. I remember that. On CBS, we've got a Big Brother Celebrity Edition, the amazing race. So watch people that we normally watch on other stuff, but yeah. we're going to watch them on that. Oh, yeah. Okay. The Amazing Race, the emergency treatment of a gunshot wound victim at the ER in the present, dredges up memories of when Griff was grievously injured and fell into a coma and reveals how his ordeal affected those around him while he was un- unaware. Man, the Amazing Race is sounding great. Oh, oh no, sorry. That's the good, uh, the new Good Sam. ABC's The New Goldbergs, Wonder Years, Connors, Home Economics, The Closer, The Chaser, rather. NBC, Chai, Try, Med, Fire, P- Fox is a new I Can See Your Voice, and Next Level Chef is new. They're, they just go up the stairs and cook more food. I don't understand. CW, The Legends Break a Fixed Point with Aobard Fawn's Assistance, creating an aberration that will attract the evil wave rider. Gwyn utilizes his military experience to devise a stealth plan. Gary helps Astra come to a realization on a new DC's Legends of Tomorrow and a new Batwoman. 3 4 has got your office marathon with Office Olympics and Fun Run. AMC has Mad Max Fury Road, one of the best sequels True. of all time. FX, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. FXX, The Simpsons Marathon with Boy Meets Curl, The Old Man and the Sea Student. Sci-Fi Channel, Harry needs to rescue Asta, but first he's got, he gets roped into attending the Sheriff's Poker Game on a new Resident Alien, not Resident Evil. <laughs> TNT has hockey, Ferda. But tonight we're going to be watching the Lifetime Movie Network, because after a devastating car accident leaves a successful young man immobile, he becomes determined to overcome the injury and turns to a physical therapist to help him walk again, where the loving care soon becomes a sick attempt to possess her patient. Leanne Van Maal and Chris Kipperman star in Dangerous Medicine. The wonderful Billy Flynn looks at what Chad and Abby are up to now. If you know what TV show they're on this week, you could win yourself a prize. It's your further adventures of Chad and Abby update. Stefan, a reporter with a drinking problem, is determined to nail a crooked union leader, and Chad wants to know if he can help out, if Stefan can be trusted, and the photographer, Xander, says he knows that there was some issue at the stewardess school, but says Stefan is no rascal. Xander thinks he is a fine part of the community. Hashtag Chad forever. You've got, you've got mail. Really? Really? I figure out that Chabby is on on the day you offer the episode titled I guess that's better than which will probably be on Wednesday's show. What kind of show are you featuring this week? LOL, love and suggestive innuendo. That is from Drace. Well, we're all adults here, right? Your face is an adult. Oh, I was hoping that meant Trace would get into some adult situations. Greetings, GRD crew. I want to thank you all for the entertaining distractions this past weekend and also offer my endorsement for Friday Night Jackbox games being a hell of a lot of fun. And monthly karaoke on a Saturday was also a lot of fun. Also, Chad and Abby are still in black and white on... 
Cheers. That's from Jared in Anaheim. Yeah, Jared showed up for Jackbox this week and stopped by for a karaoke on Saturday, and apparently he's going to show up to the next poker night as well. You could be at all three of them, our things. All you got to do is come join the crew. How do you do that? Well, we've told you a million times, but if you really want to ask the question again, why not send us a note? It's podcast at geekradiodaily.com, or of course, a voicemail, a text message. Use the magic numbers. 510-GRD Crow. Or just listen to the show when it happens and we tell you how to join again. You could do both, though. It's fine. Hi, boys, girls, and friends beyond the binary. I'm Matricula, a birthday clown for all ages that are 18 and up. Join me around the campfire to sing songs full of youthful nostalgia like the magic and save a horse, ride a time lord. I also host the Nasty Woman Knitting Circle where we knit cozies and other items for charity fundraisers. Catch me live on twitch.tv slash M-E-T-R-I-C-U-L-A. See you there. Hi, this is Cheryl and Fenn, and you're listening to Geek Radio Daily. The show that the day after your birthday will remember we have a drop for you that we should have played on your birthday. Yay! Actually, I'm looking for a Batman number 14. That's a very serious book, man. And it's available at your friendly local neighborhood comic shop. What's on the shelf, sir? Well, we happen to have from DC Comics, Arkham City, The Order of the World, five of six, Joker presents a puzzle box wrapping up its seventh, World of Krypton, three of six, and Marcus' son moves around a lot because his adoptive parents are freelance hench people. So this month he finds himself as the new kid at Gotham City High School, where a mysterious man with pig features asks Marcus to walk through a water curtain to reveal himself as who Marcus really is. Someone who has adventured through the journey to the West, can transform into 72 different formations, can clone himself using his hairs, and is called Monkey Prince. One of 12. Over at Marvel, it's Alien number nine. Daredevil Woman Without Fear, two of three. Kazar, Lord of the Savage Land, wraps up. It's five. And you know, they were loved by their adoring fans. They were reviled by the harsh press. They lived, they loved, they fought, they died a lot. All for the sake of their fans. They were ecstatics, a team of mutant celebrities fighting for a brighter world and an even brighter spotlight. But they're old news now because there's a new mutant team that will live harder, love harder, fight harder, and die a whole lot harder than those has beens. It's the best new superhero team you didn't know you needed. You get to meet the excellent number one. From Archie, we've got Archie's Valentine's Day Spectacular number one. From Boom Studios, we've got Basilisk 7, Buckethead 3 of 5, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer 34. From Dark Horse, we have the powerful and ancient blood sorcerer Roman Black has taken a young fire mage under his wing after she has done the impossible. Taken her magic house's totem spirit inside herself. I don't know. But the token is powerful and may be impossible to control. Especially when Roman's children begin to see the young mage as a threat. In Manor Black, Fire in the Blood, number one. IDW Publishing Star Trek, The Mirror War, four of eight. Transformers, King Grimlock, wraps up its five. In Image Comics, a thing called Truth, four of five. Crossover, number 11, between who? Echo Land's Raw Cut, edition number five. Scumbag, number 12. But over at Mad Cave Studios, in the future... Europe has united under one man, the autocrat. He rules the apocalyptic landscape from corporate monopolies with a vision of unity that is gospel to some, but hollow to others. To distract the 99% from their poor and empty lives, they're given an opportunity to compete in the Grand Race, a marathon street race through Europe where only one driver can make it to the end and win a life of luxury. Our hero, Sebastian Valencia, enters with the hope of winning the race that can make up for his wasted past, but along the way, he starts to question what kind of future he's actually buying into. For fans of Cannibal Run Meet Mad Max, it's Speed Republic, number one. I'm not wearing any pants. Film at 11. Geek News! Taking a look at the world from a geeky point of view. Sony has agreed to acquire Bungie, the video game developer who created the Halo and Destiny franchise, in a deal valued at $3.6 billion. That's a lot of loot crate. Following the acquisition, Bungie will be an independent subsidy of Sony Entertainment Interactive, whatever they call themselves. The deal comes in the wake of Microsoft's acquisition of game publisher Activision Blizzard in a $68.7 billion deal. Ooh, that's a shot across the bow. This much smaller acquisition is something of a symbolic one, as Bungie was acquired by Microsoft in 2000, went independent in 2007, signed a 10-year deal with Activision in 2010, and was independent again in 2019. (laughs) They just can't keep relationships. 
Bungie will reportedly continue to be a multi-platform and independent studio and publisher, with the company making it clear its future games will not become PlayStation exclusives, but could mean formerly exclusive games may now be playable on PlayStation or even crossover. So get ready to see Master Chief appear in future installments of Uncharted, God of War, Last of Us, and of course, Sackboy, a big adventure. Yes, we know they don't own Halo anymore. Google's email service is getting revamped with a new interface for better sync with Workspace. The new layout will change how Google Chat, Meet, and Spaces are integrated. Google, we're constantly changing things. And not for the best. The Gmail integrated view will be available to try starting in February and will become default by April. It'll be rolling out to all users by quarter two, 2022, as per Google. The Google Workspace blog suggests that Workspace users can begin testing the new layout from February 8th. The layout will provide users the option to switch between four buttons mail, chat, spaces, and meet. Google suggests that users will only see an enlarged view of the four buttons at a time, along with support for notification bubbles, keeping them up to date on the other tabs. How is that different than what they have now? This will become the standard experience for Gmail with no option to revert back. Around the same time, users will also begin seeing the new streamlined navigation experience on chat web, which is mail.google.com slash chat, This also means users will not have the option to configure chat to display on the right side of Gmail, the company mentioned in its post. But why, though? Google says that users who update to the new layout will see the same list of mail and label options available today. Those who haven't tried the new Gmail layout will be switched to it by April. However, users will be able to revert to change for some time before it is permanently set to default by the end of quarter two, 2022. Do you like it? (laughs) We don't care. Do you want to know why we're changing? Shut your dumb face. We're Google. What are you going to do? Use Yahoo Mail? (laughs) No. So suck it. (laughs) Sun Man, the hero who has a pretty wild origin story. Uh, The action figure's origin story is even better. After her three-year-old son, Menelik told her he couldn't be a superhero because he was black... Wyla Eason created Sun Man and the Rulers of the Sun, a group of multi-ethnic heroes whose toys were bestsellers in the 1980s. There really weren't many black superheroes in the 80s. Then after a brief appearance by Sun Man as a Mattel online exclusive last year, he and his fellows Rulers of the Sun are officially joining the Masters of the Universe toy line. Sun Man has just gone on pre-order, and other rulers should become available early this year. Sun Man, an ancient Egyptian prince renowned for his kindness and fairness. Digitino, a computer wizard who computerized half his brain just before the Mesoamerican god Quetzalcoatl appeared and gave him some gear, as well as the evil villain Pighead. He has big muscles and a pig for a head. That's about as much backstory as most of the villains in Masters of the Universe got. They all come with sweet retro packaging along with the rest of the Masters of the Universe Origins line. Each of the relaunch characters also feature improved articulation for all of your leaving in the original packaging fun. Mint in box. This is a great thing. It's important for there to be heroes of all types so every little kid feels represented. It's not hard, except for the early Masters of the Universe line. I mean, they had Clamp Champ. They had Clamp Champ. And we're not even going to talk about anti-Eternia Black Nemesis He-Man because that that was just wrong. Tale of a vigilante hero of the people named Robin Hood stealing from the rich to help provide for the poor has been told and retold since the 13th century. Now, in the 21st century, when we are living in a bleak timeline of wealth inequality and one of the most staggering unequal distribution of assets in history, the story of Robin Hood is getting an updated and modernized retelling from Director X, the prolific director of such music videos as Bootylicious by Destiny's Child, Work by Rihanna, Thong Song by Cisco, and Hotline Bling by Drake. He's also directed the films Across the Line, Center Stage, On Point, and the 2018 remake of Superfly. We won't hold Hotline Bling against him, though. Oh, you used to call me on the cell phone. It was announced today (laughs) that Director X's newest project would be Robin Hood, spelled with a Y, an eight-episode action drama series that follows Gen C woman as the titular hero, who has almost exclusively been portrayed by men over time. Director X will be sharing co-running duties and will direct several episodes, as well as executive producing alongside Chris Roberts of Orphan Black fame, who will also help write the series. This is the perfect time to modernize Robin Hood, Director X said recently in a press release. We're currently living in the Gilded Age 2.0, where billionaires have way too much and the poor have far too little. We need someone to fight for justice. 
And if anyone complains about the gender swap, I'll remind them it's a fictional character and it doesn't matter, nor did you bitch when Xenoscope did it. The series from Boat Rocker Studios will shoot in Toronto and Hamilton, Ontario, and is set to debut on Canada's global television network sometime in 2023. Casting for the series is said to be beginning soon. The plot, of course, centers on fearless Robin Loxley, who is a member of a masked hip-hop band called The Hood from the Sherwood Towers neighborhood, a cluster of rental high-rises in a working-class corner of New Nottingham. Robin takes a stand in a quest to fight injustice, hold corporate people in power accountable, and uses the greed of others as a way to help the community. Well, there is a wide selection of injustice available to fight nowadays. As a lover of modern reimaginings of classic tales, it sounds like Director X is a pretty sweet modernization on his hands. Given his close relationship with so many of hip-hop's greatest artists, we can assume that Robin Hood will have an equally banging soundtrack and hopefully some original music from the hood. And, whoever they cast, I'm sure they'll have a much more believable accent than Kevin Costner. A recent poster for DC's upcoming superhero film, The Batman, was found to have hidden messages on it that only become visible when a black light is shown on them. Uh, um, be careful with that. Shining a black light on, on some posters can be dangerous to your eyesight. Almost as bad as your room. The secret was revealed by Twitter user Nevertell, who noticed the markings on a physical version of one of the film's theatrical posters featured Robert Pattinson's Batman and Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman standing side by side. Uh-oh. Borrowing a black light from a co-worker, Nevertal, posted photos of the hidden messages which are now visible. Specifically, the film's title becomes a target by the villain Riddler's classic question mark insignia, which acts as the center of a pair of crosshairs. In the top of the two corners of the poster, a cryptic message also reads, You are a part of this too, and find out why. Cool. The black light also reveals that underneath the message is a series of hieroglyphs, the same hieroglyphs that appeared in the recent Bat and the Cat trailer alongside the film's March 4th release date. The cipher had been decoded by many fans across the internet as You are El Rata Alada, which translates to You are radish, Alan Alda. No, no, you are the winged rat. Fans who were able to uncover the December trailer's coded message were also directed to follow the clues to RataAlda.com, a promotional website for The Batman, which follows... That allows riddle solvers that allows riddle solvers to access exclusive bonus images from the film if they can correctly solve three of the Riddler's questions. Yeah, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? We love ARGs. That would marketing groups do clever things like this that make sense for the characters. I mean, that's just the best. I hope that the movie is as good as it looks, not just for us, but also for Warner Brothers. Because if it stinks, it'll follow them around forever. After all, sometimes. You just can't get rid of a bomb. GRD is licensed with the Creative Commons Attributions Not Commercial. The Underrivered Works United States 3.0 license. Come check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. Stop by the website at geekradiodaily.com. <laughs> oh, you deserve a gold star for that one, sir. You can go to your room happy. You can have two popsicles tonight. Yay. Ooh. Good boy. Drop us a note and tell us how fantastic you think that joke was. It's podcast at geekradiodaily.com. And seriously, if you've ever figured out what the... Uh, the whole riddle thing was from Outworld Fleet Radio because I still have no damn clue. By all means, drop a note with the podcasting thing. I told you that. But use the voicemail or the text message, the numbers you need. 510 G R D. And we'll be seeing ya. It seems I found myself on the voyage of the damned. Welcome to Nerd School. Nerd. Good night, suckers. Anyways, tune in tomorrow for another astonishingly wondrous episode of Adam West Presents Adam West. Same Adam time, same Adam channel. In France, when a man is caught poaching ostriches, we shed his head and we make him to run through the fields. Oh, God, that's the good part. Once you have seen this... <laughs> You are never quite the same. Okay. Tell me about it. I used to model. Lucky for you, I am an honorable man. A what? I'm sorry? I said I am an honorable man. I'm sorry. I, 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 honorable. 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 I don't know what you're saying. Hon honorable. Honorable. Hon honorable. 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 I think I you're trying to say honorable. Shut up! Hey! I'm sorry. All right. Here it is. I am going to ask you a question. If you get it right, I will set you free. If you get it wrong, well, you will be spending a lot of time with the ever-popular Mark. I can be very nice. 
All right. Here it is. What is the average running speed of a full-grown male African ostrich? Pass. Pass to me. I know it. Pass tomorrow. You cannot pass!